everyone, and welcome to another episode on the Virtual Shelling Network. We've got a really fun one for you this evening. We're going to be talking about beach erosion, and I'm going to be taking you around the island to show you some different beaches and how beach erosion has affected them. Um, so right now I'm on the bridge that connects Sanibel and Captiva. So that is Blind Pass, and that is Sanibel over there, and this is the bridge over to Captiva. And down around the corner right here is where they did beach erosion um, renourishment about a year a year or so ago and then on this side over here um, right around here this used to all be beach here on the corner and you can see there's no there's no beach left but it's all rocks and boulders so they've got some excavators out there and they're doing um, some beach erosion uh, what would you call it kind of tr treatment beach erosion prevention um, and so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, what it looks like and, and kind of talk about what causes it and some things like that All right, so here is the parking lot, and I'll try to do a freeze frame of this so you guys can um, read that if you want to. It's been closed in September, but we'll be opening back up here uh, very soon, November um, 6th. And you can see they've got some of these big rocks that they use, these big um, rock boulders that they use um, to help prevent beach erosion. And they're kind of redoing the whole parking lot here. Um, they've got it all scraped out and they've got some big pipes. And I don't really know the ins and outs of all the engineering, but I know it is definitely a big job. So welcome to Captiva and Turner Beach. Okay, so we had to go down um, Captiva and walk up the beach because it's closed, but that would be the entrance to Turner Beach at the parking lot, and then you can see the jetty um, where a lot of people fish often. But here's the funny thing, guys. Watch, as I walk up close to the water, it literally just drops off. Yikes. And that's probably a good three-foot drop right there. So um, you can start to see that the the waves that come in especially after we have big storms it comes right up here through this cove and kind of carves out um the beach and there's not a whole lot of beach left here um, and right across the street are our houses and homes so so we have to be really careful with beach erosion because it can really start to affect not only the beach but the the homes and condos and and um and land on the other side you can see here it's just it just carves it right out so um I'm gonna try to get down here without falling without falling over the little cliff. It is a beautiful evening. The sun is uh, getting ready to set, which means the bugs will probably be coming out too. Um, but it is very deep water here. There's not, it's not shallow with a sandbar like on the east end of the island. And so the waves get uh, much bigger and then come in with much more force. And you can see right here is where that, that high tide came in and just literally carved out you can see exactly where that line is so instead of leaving kind of a rack line it leaves like an indentation um, in the sand so that is kind of what we're looking at which is the big problem look how pretty the water is I wonder if we're gonna see some dolphins tonight you guys can see we got a nice rainbow there in the background But the interesting thing is about beach erosion. Um, you can see here, look look at this wall up here. You can, and I don't know if you guys are able to see with the waves, but it's like a slope. You can see right here with the sand falling. Can you guys see like, it's like a wall, but the sand starts to fall. So if I push it, it just falls over. So as the water comes up, it kind of makes a cave underneath and then all the sand on top will start to fall down. So the water comes in and carves out underneath and then the sand from on top falls down. So that's kind of how it starts to work. And I don't know if you can see the slope of the waves, but it's very, very steep where I'm walking right now. And this is a very high wall. It's about hip height on me. And this is the problem with beach erosion. It's totally natural. Sanibel Island, Captiva, these, these beaches would not be here if it weren't for the fact that we continue to renourish them and try to prevent beach erosion. 
Cape Romano, it, and I'll do a video on Cape Romano too at one point, but that's a great example of a beach that's just no longer there. Oh, look, look, look. Look at this auger. It is ginormous. Look how big. Holy moly. But Cape Romano is gone. The homes there are gone because the, the natural occurrence of beach erosion took over and, and nobody was there to spend the money on renourishing the beach and, and keep it a beach. So this is what happens. Look at the slope. I hope you guys can see the slope because it's not flat at all. I know it's kind of hard to see. Let me turn around here. You can see my footprints. I'm like sinking in the sand. But it is like, it reminds me of the, kind of like the West Coast of California. They kind of have the same like deep water and then it comes in at, at like a, a big sloped angle on, on the beach. But this is what it looks like. Okay, this is really cool, you guys. So this is like looking straight at the wall. And you can see like there's just sand, but look at the shells. So when you guys talk about digging for shells, this is where the shells are. There's like literally a shell shelf underneath. The top portion is all sand, but look, here's like a piece of a conch. I'm sure there's big conchs in there. Here's a little clam. But, but you can clearly see that there is a layer in there of just shells. This is the shell layer. So when you guys are digging for shells, sometimes you dig and you just find sand, right? But sometimes you gotta dig a little bit deeper and you hit that shell shelf. There's a little serif. I mean, look at all of the shells just in that one layer. Oops, and there goes the sand. Because that's what happens. A kitten paw. That is very interesting. You guys can see clearly there's a clear shell shelf. Okay, so now we are on the other side of the bridge and we're on the Sanibel side. This is Blind Pass Beach. And we're gonna kind of check out and see what we find here. There's like kind of a lot of seaweed and stuff um, around. I don't know if we'll find anything interesting in there but my goal is to kind of go and take you guys towards castaway cottages which is a really popular place um, for people to stay because you're right on the beach but last year they had a big problem with beach erosion so we're gonna just work our way down right around the curve here and you'll be able to see the cottages and i'll show you what they did um, for beach erosion let me just come up here and see Oh, there's a crab claw. I thought I saw one. It's empty and it's missing the claw part. So that's not good. Um, I know some of you are crab claw fans, so I'm always on the lookout, but it's hard to find them, um, especially empty. So let's just see if we see anything as we're walking. Anytime there's seaweed, I always keep my eyes open for, you know, any type of egg casings or crab shells or um, sea beans or any type of other beach treasures, driftwood, that type of thing, because all that stuff kind of comes in with the seaweed. I'm not really seeing a whole lot other than leaves and seaweed. There's a little kitten paw. I will tell you, if you're a kitten paw fan, um, Blind Pass and Turner Beach are an excellent place for them. All right, so here you can see the cottages cast away, and you can see here there's the wall starting again, right? So they're already having beach erosion issues and they just refurbished this whole beach which means they had these big tubes you can see up here where the cottages are um, the water was up to the cottages after hurricane irma so they took these big pipes and they run them out into the water and then they bring up sand and pump it up on the beach and they renourish or refurbish the beach so this wall, you can see how high it is. It's literally like almost hip height for me. Um, and it's already starting to erode again. And again, it's a natural process, guys. Like it's not anything, you know, that, that's not natural, uh, you know. So, so this is just nature taking its course. But unfortunately, we have condos and homes on the beach. So we try our best to prevent them from being washed away and washed out. Um, so as we come up here, you will see how close these are to the water and they didn't used to be it's just the beach has eroded that much why is that there was a little tree it's just a stick let's see if we see anything else as we're walking up this way and then here you can see just how close the water gets to that end cottage 
and and I mean I'm not sure if they actually flooded out in Irma but I know that the, the waves were like up to them I mean it was kind of crazy and then up here you can see where they had like a seawall that they built and that is to prevent beach erosion so instead of the waves just taking the sand out to sea the waves hit the wall and then it's they're not able to take any of the sand so on the other side at turner beach you know instead of having this wall of i think this is just like a like a dock type of wood wall with pilings they have rocks and boulders and they're finding that that works a little better because if you guys can tell the wood over time starts to deteriorate and break down so eventually that will have to be um, replaced and the rocks won't so you'll also see that at the causeway and also lighthouse point as well I was hoping we'd see some dolphins tonight, but I don't see any out there just yet. Hello, hello, hello. Look at the shell piles, you guys. Holy cow. Look at all the shells. I mean, if you stay at this cottage, I mean, you know, these shell piles might be here or they might not, but this is a great place to stay because you are so close to the beach. You walk right out. You're at the beach. You're at Blind Pass. You can go over the bridge to Turner. The only downside is you're kind of far away from the heart of Sanibel as far as like shopping and things like that. Oh, here's a really pretty cockle shell and a conch. Let's see if we see anything else fun. You know, a piece of driftwood. Look how cute this one is. That'll be really cute in a little bowl. I love unique pieces of driftwood. Everybody thinks driftwood has to be ginormous, but I like the little fun, unique pieces. And this was some type of a rack line. You can see up here is another rack line, a remnants of of some some rack line that was up here pushing all this stuff in in from the in from the ocean. Let's see if there's anything fun. This is a lot of the time you can find some fun egg casings and other pieces of driftwood and things. There's a few pieces of driftwood, some mangrove seeds, little baby coconut. You never know what you're gonna find. So it's always good to check it out. It's another piece of driftwood. really see too much. Another little cockle. There's another little pile here. So you can kind of look around and find these little piles to go through. All right, so the skies are getting a little bit gray. What I'd like to do is head over to Lighthouse in a little bit and show you guys what it looks like over there. It, it might be storming, but we're gonna check it out. So I will be back shortly. Okay, so here we are at Lighthouse. Holy moly, the waves are crazy here. It is super, super windy and it is definitely gonna storm but I wanted to show you the crazy beach erosion going on here. So we are very close to Lighthouse. Like, it's right there. <laughs> Hold on, let me kind of try to see if I can find the Lighthouse through the trees here. Lighthouse is right there. Hello. So we are extremely close to Lighthouse and there is hardly any beach left. Look at this wall. It is crazy. You can see all of the roots that are being exposed. The, the waves are just taking the sand away and just exposing all of the roots. It is like the craziest thing, you guys. Look at all of the tree and mangrove roots. Isn't this so crazy? Now, here's the fun thing, right? Like I was telling you about like the shell shelf. You see the shells on the top and then you have a layer of sand and then underneath it's literally like seashells. This is where all your shells are. You want to know where the shells are? This is where they are. Look, here's a little auger right here I'm going to pluck out. There are so many shells buried in here. 
I'm gonna go through and try to see if I find anything fun. Do a little virtual shell digging in the erosion wall. See if we find anything cool. Now I'm not gonna do a ton and go to town because I don't wanna erode it any more than it already is. But let's see if we can, there's a little cockle there. Some scallops, there's a conch hiding. I can get back there and get it out. Here's a turkey wing. I love turkey wings. Let me get that conch though and see if it's whole. Nope, it's broken. But you guys get the idea. Like, this is all shells that are packed underneath. Let me get under these roots here and see if there's anything else. Another cockle. Oh my gosh, you guys, look. Look, look piece of it true that would be so amazing if there was like a big true tulip in here i know there's cool stuff in here we just gotta go and dig around a little bit and find some stuff oh wait 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 wait, wait. look do you guys know what this is this is a ray plate this is a mouth plate of a stingray how cool is that of a find okay yeah there's definitely some cool stuff in here up where barry and i lived in maryland we lived near calvert cliffs and the cliffs were like this. Instead of seashells, there were fossils. And as as the water eroded away, look at that nice cockle, the, the wall, the fossils would come out. And that's how people would find them. So this is the same concept. All this stuff buried in this wall of sand, you've got all of these amazing shells. I'm sure there's so many cool shells in here. Dig, 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 dig. Come on, come on, come on. I'm trying to get that out. I want to see. It's a whelk, but I want to see if it's whole, and I can't get it out. Ugh. Come on. Oh my gosh, I just can't get it. I want to know if it's whole. is really packed in there. I need a tool. Come on. Oh, oh, it's kind of broken. It was a whelk though. It was worth checking out. Look at all these shells. Look at all of them. Murex. I mean, so many shells just in this in this one area of this wall. I mean, if you if you really dug through it all, I'm sure there would be a ton of stuff that you would find. Isn't this just so crazy? Everybody wants to know where the shells are hiding. They're under the sand, buried deep. But that is why, you guys, like, you know, sometimes there's shells, sometimes there's not. And it just all depends. Look how close we are here to the lighthouse. Oh, my gosh. It just all depends. I mean, the, the waves come in and cover shells up with sand. And then sometimes they come in and uncover shells. Look at all these shells. Look at all the roots. Here's another piece of a true. True tulips are here. I'm trying to see if I can get back into these roots and see. It's a conch. Pretty conch. I feel like I'm in a cave right now, even though I'm not, but I feel like I am. There's just so many roots and branches. It's just so crazy. And I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do for Lighthouse. Look at this pretty little scallop with the barnacles on it. Hopefully you guys are getting a good view. I feel like we're like cave shelling. What is this right here? It's a big clam. 
Look at the roots that have grown onto this shell. Crazy. Very interesting. This big wall is blocking the wind, which is good. This is very windy. I don't know if you guys can hear the wind, but it is very windy. It's a little... That's a beautiful whelk. Look at that. Nice big one. Try to see if it gets some sand out of there. Get that nice whelk hiding in there. It makes you wonder what other shells are in there, right? Like, do you think there's any, like, alphabet cones, genonias? There's a big cockle right here. Now, don't ever think that there's not shells. There are. They might not be laying on the beach, but trust me when I say there are, there are lots of shells. you guys over here so you can see the whole what's left of the beach I mean this used to be a ton of beach look at this piece of driftwood this is the type of piece I'd want to take home but let me see oh yeah it's like really heavy it's it's mobile but it's really heavy I know a lot of you love those big huge pieces of driftwood there's another one out here it came from somewhere probably washed out from these trees as the beach has taken the sand away. Look at the sky. It's really nice, but I'm telling you, it's going to get ready to storm here soon. I know it. I can feel it. It's getting windy and the sky's getting dark. Oh my gosh. Well, hopefully you guys um, enjoyed being able to see this beach erosion and kind of learn about it. And the interesting thing for me is to be able to show you guys kind of a cross section of the beach. And you can see the shells on top, right? Those are the shells we always see. Then you have this layer that goes down of just sand. And then you hit the shell shelf. So the shells are on top. And that's what we always see. And when we dig, we just hit sand, right? So if I dig, 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 you're digging for shells and you're like, there's no shells. Why do people dig and get shells when all I get is sand? But the problem is that you got to dig deep enough through all the sand, right? So that's all sand, 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 sand. Now you hit the shells. Now there's nothing but shells. All of this is shells. Look at all the shells. As I dig through, they're kind of packed in there, but this is all shells. So once you understand kind of the anatomy of the beach, you'll understand what, what, what it means when people all of a sudden find like a honey hole. It's just the, the waves have taken away that top layer of sand and now you're left with all of the, the shell layer. So hopefully that makes sense. Like here, there's just all sand. You can see it. It's all sand and then way at the bottom, right? All sand. And, and then the bottom, that's where you get the shells. Look at that. It's kind of amazing when you can see it like that. It's hard to explain, but once you can see it, it's like, oh my God, I understand. The shells are all at the bottom. Look at all the shells. Tons of shells is all made up of shells. It's not made up of sand. It's literally packed shells all together. Isn't that crazy? All right, so it is definitely about to storm. I'll show you this guy here in a second. <laughs> my husband's like, let's go. Oh yeah, we gotta go. Okay, thank you guys so much for joining me on this super fun episode of Beach Erosion. I hope you learned something new. I hope you got to see what the beaches look like here on Sanibel all the way from one end of Sanibel to the other. I will see you guys again next time right here on the Virtual Shelling Network. Thank you so much for your support. And now I'm running to our car. See you next time.